You know what's not boring? 360 videos, and that's why we're here. So the first half of this video is going to be how to actually make a 360 video in Blender. Uh, if you want to make this yourself, then you can download the source files below, but not all 360 videos are created equal. So the second half of this video is going to be tips and advice for how to actually make a 360 video interesting. Let's go. So when you open up the source file, this is what you're going to see. Uh, this animation was posted last week, so if you haven't seen it, you can check it out here. But what we have is a track animation with a camera that follows along with it and particles of snow or I'm not even sure what falling through the air. Uh, the camera goes off the edge and then it falls down to its doom. So how do we export this? Well on the Blender side it's actually pretty straightforward. With the camera selected we're going to go over to the camera panel and right now you can see we're set to perspective which will render out a normal animation uh, but there are three options here. The other one is orthographic which is similar to the perspective orthographic view that you'll see. Not similar, it's exactly the same. Uh, and the third option is panoramic. We're going to enable that one and make sure the type is set to that word. And so if we look at this in render view, we can see how it's looking. So that already looks like a 360 video, and that was just with one button. And as we scrub along the animation and fall off the edge, you can see the camera is rendering an all-encompassing view. And this is what we need. So back at the camera settings, we can make sure everything's in order. Uh, 1920 by 1080 will be good for now. We'll come back to that and talk about it later. Make sure the output is set to something like PNG. That'll work. And have your save location set up to a folder that you need. And then you just hit render. So after you're done rendering, you're going to locate your frames. And as you can see, these are all dandy and good and what we're going for. But for the following step, we're going to need to turn this into a video. So we'll need to bring in our frames to something like the video editor. Uh, and then we're going to come back, we're going to make sure that the post-processing sequencer is enabled. And we are going to export it as a video type. So under the movie category, something as... You could go crazy and go with like a RAW or whatever, we don't really need that. Uh, something as simple as an MPEG video uh, with an H.264 codec, set to a good quality, will work. And then we're going to export this into a location that we know. Give it an appropriate name and then export the animation. So after that's done, we can check out the video. And it's looking good, but it's not quite ready to export just yet. Because if you uploaded this to any place, it would just think it's a pretty weird, warpy looking video and not recognize it as a 360. So we're going to need to format this and put metadata in it so that a 360 displayer can recognize it for what it is. To do that, we're gonna to need to use another free software. Uh, this one's pretty promising and doesn't give you viruses. Provide a download link below. What you do is open up that link, you select either the Windows or Mac version, depending on what you're using. You click it, you download it, you extract it, and you run it. So you're going to see this pretty complicated looking software. What we're going to do is we're going to open our file and load in the video. Uh, make sure that checkbox my video is spherical enabled. Ours is not stereoscopic, so we don't need to pay attention to that. And then simply inject metadata. And it's going to create a duplicate file with the injected data. And there we go. Now this new file will play exactly the same way as the other one, so you may not even notice the difference. But when we upload this to a 360 place, like YouTube or Facebook, it's going to recognize it. But before you run off and make your 360 animations, there's a few things to keep in mind. Number one is resolutions. Now we just exported in 1080, and the video that I posted last week was exported in 1080. As we can see, it gets the job done, however it is a little bit on the blurry side. Now YouTube recommends higher resolutions such as 7168 by 3584 or even 8192 by 4096 And if your computer can handle it, and if your scene actually has enough detail to justify those extra pixels, I would say go for it. Now in terms of viewing, the majority of what you're viewing should stay pretty close to the horizon side of things, because basically when viewing you are inside a giant sphere and the image is stretched around you which means anything that is at the North Pole or South Pole is going to be pretty stretched and distorted and the cleanest viewing will be around the center. So two more quick tips to keep things interesting. Tip number one is stay multi-directional. Don't just look in one direction uh, and also stay moving. Something that generally stays in motion is a pretty good idea to, hey, how did that subscribe button get up there? Get out of here, you. Again, if you want to make this, then you can download below. And if you do something really cool, I'd love to see it. Let me know.